My name's Kenny. I work as a helicopter pilot and uh, airplane pilot, but today I'm going to be talking about my work as a helicopter pilot doing wild firefighting. On a uh, typical day, uh, I usually get to the airport or the uh, cow pasture and pre-flight the helicopter, go or do our morning briefings, figure out if it's going to be a busy day or not. And uh, then we uh, hang out in our crew trailer and wait for the call. Uh, once the calls, or we get the call, um, Usually we go and get a quick debriefing where the fire is going to be at, who we're going to be talking to on the ground or in the air with us. Uh, and then we uh, start up the helicopter and head out with our uh, bucket and uh, go get some water in a river or lake, pond, uh, small swimming pools, whatever's close water available to the fire. So the way we get water is there's a uh, bucket hanging off the bottom of a 150 foot rope and it holds 900 gallons worth of water or about four tons worth of water. Uh, and we uh, finagle that 150 foot rope down into a small little pond uh, between the trees and uh, scoop up our water with it. Then we take it back to the fire and put it wherever the ground guys want it. Usually it's on a tree or on the fire's edge. And we help cool it down that way and uh, water just pours out the bottom. We keep on going and doing that for about eight hours. And uh, then we head back and wrap up the end of our day. Uh, some of the sources of stress for our job is uh, the environment itself uh, with the smoke and the fire. Uh, it gets pretty hectic. You can't really see that much. There's usually three or four other helicopters flying in there with you, so you're always on a constant lookout for them. Uh, while you're doing that, you're usually trying to talk to guys on the ground and everybody else in the air at the same time. And then uh, other things you got to watch out for is the helicopter itself. It's always trying to kill you, so you just got to keep on your toes and you know, watch your instruments, make sure everything's still working right. I uh, had a couple instances where you had to go land in the middle of a cow pasture and wait for the mechanics to come check your engines and make sure they're good to go. So uh, there's a lot of stuff out there that can, you know, give you great hair. So our typical working hours, uh, you know, if we're busy, it's going to be a maximum of 14 hours a day. If we're not, it could be anywhere from uh, 8 to 10 hours just hanging around, waiting. Uh, ways for education to learn how to do this, there's the uh, military route, uh, basically we go and become a military pilot and get out after a couple of years and join the civilian world or do what I did and start in the civilian world. Um, I started off with uh, flight school obviously and learned how to fly and then from there you know, it could take a year or two to, to get your ratings and then another five or six years to learn everything you need to know how to do to become a firefighter. So um, there's a lot of different uh, skills required for that, uh, being able to, one, know the type of helicopter you're going to fly, and then the type of flying you're going to do, whether it's going to be vertical reference with a long line or a tank firefighting. Um, there's uh, different skill sets required for each of those. So some of the skills you kind of need to learn how to uh, fly out here is, uh, like I mentioned, vertical reference, which is flying outside your bubble window looking at the ground. Uh, you're basically flying by looking at the ground, uh, watching on it, make sure your bucket doesn't hit the trees and that kind of stuff. Uh, which kind of leads into good situational awareness. You always need to know what's around you, ahead of you and behind you. Uh, and preparedness will help take care of a lot of that. You know, it helps uh, for any possibilities or problem solving you're going to have to have. Um, so in any kind of situation can start or uh, come up you know, in the middle of your flight or at the end of your flight or the beginning of your flight. Um, and it could uh, be as simple as you, know, you forgot to flip a switch or it could be as something as severe as you need to land as soon as possible. Um, so having a good head on your shoulders and knowing your surroundings and what assets you have available to you help uh, you survive the situation. Uh, best part of the job is obviously the flying. Uh, it's some of the coolest flying you could ever do. You're flying the mountains, down rivers and canyons. Um, mostly in places that most people don't even see in their books. You know, it's uh, beautiful scenery out there. It's really cool to see that part of the world and uh, be involved in it. Um, then uh, some of the worst parts of the job are obviously uh, being away from home. It's a uh, long time on the road living out of hotels, some nice ones, some not so nice ones. Um, and uh, you know being away for months at a time can be kind of stressful when you've got family back home that are either worried about you or uh, you know wonder what you're doing. Um, and then, uh, you know, some of the events that happen while you're on the job can, you know, 
make you wonder why you do it. You know, I had an instance one time where I went head to head with a, another airplane and it popped out of the smoke and we had to duck for the trees and they went up and started yelling at us. So um, there's definitely goods and bads. So my final advice, uh, if you think you would like to do this, uh, go take an airplane ride, see if you actually like to get up in the air. If you do, then stick with it. Make sure you follow through. I've seen plenty of people that, you know, get 90% of the way there and just for whatever reason stop and then they just wasted a ton of time and money and um, it's something that could be awesome you know, if you like high energy and outdoors and, uh, you know, problem solving and figuring things out and uh, doing something that's pretty cool and worthwhile, you know, fighting, saving homes and animals or trees or whatever, then uh, it's definitely worth looking into. Um, but just remember it's can be stressful and it can be time consuming, but it's definitely rewarding at the end.